right, let's get to it. Afternoon, everybody. It is another balmy as hell Alabama Southern afternoon. But <clears throat> we'll get out and do something I wanted. I kind of want to talk about. Um, Fourth of July, I put up a little post on new acquisition. Uh, <clears throat> if you've been following me for a while, um, you'll know that I like the old stuff. I like the old stuff, the cowboy stuff, the classics. Um, so that's that's the route I went, <clears throat> and the reason I did so was uh, Danny had went to a pawn shop. He saw something similar to something I've been wanting lately. Back in the day, I had a Smith and Wesson 686. I got it. Uh, I'm in a trade. Uh, I put a scope on it, all that good stuff, you know, and I absolutely loved it. A couple of years after that, I uh, got filled in the hard times. Uh, we all been there sell stuff and I end up selling my Smith & Wesson. Well, I've been wanting to get back into it because I want to get into revolver hunting. And that's uh, something I never got to do with it before I sold it. <clears throat> but, uh, so I've kind of been looking for another 686. And I was at the pawn shop and they had a model 66. I don't even remember the model. I think it was a 66. Anyways, 357 Magnum. Six inch, bar uh, six inch barrel, uh, it was from the 80s. I already had a scope mounted on and everything. It was one they had picked up in an estate sale, and they had, I think it was $575 for it, something like that. It was $575, $525, something like that. It was $575 after I paid taxes. But uh, it was awesome. Got it, brought it home, went to test it. Uh, fired two times out of eight shots. Uh, so that was a major bummer. Called the shop and said, yeah, bring it back, we need money back. I knew it was probably something really simple to fix it, but I took it back on the principle of when I buy something, I expect it to work unless I'm buying it to work on. I've bought project guns in the past, uh, but if I'm not intentionally buying a project gun, if it doesn't work, I'm not happy. So they gave me money back, it was always good. So I was really frustrated because not very often does my wife tell me, go buy it she did this time. So I was like, alright, well, I'm getting something today. So I called up the uh, local Bass Pro Shop and I said, do you have this? I said, let me look. Went back, looked. I said, yes sir, we do have one. I said, okay, I'm about an hour and a half, two hours away. Give me two and a half hours. I said, I'll be there. Box it up. So they went to boxing it up. What I picked up was Stoger Coach Gun Supreme. thing is beautiful. Um, I kind of wanted I wanted a coach gun for a long time. You know, I've got uh, my Stevens 311, but when I got it, it was already cut down. Uh, it, it's got the 20-inch barrels, uh, but it's, the stock has been chopped, and it's been, all the wood's been redone very nicely. Uh, it's a beautiful shotgun, but it's, a, it's kind of a show toy. It's kind of like a, here, let me flex a little bit, guys, and pull that out. Uh, it's my, you know, it's my Doom Slayer, uh, my Doom Guy Super Shotgun, you know, it's not something that gets pulled out a whole lot. But I've wanted a nice double barrel for as long as I can remember, and one that I can actually utilize, you know, so I wanted to stop. So, you know, cloud cover's coming over, it's getting a little bit dark. <clears throat> so, I wanted something that was usable. I always love these Stoker Coach guns. It's good enough cowboy action shooters because you know, there's no telling how many shells they put through these things and they just hold up. And the price point's perfect. I think, I think this thing was like $519 was the sticker price. So I got out like $550, $560, something like that after taxes somewhere. Uh, so I just want to show it off and talk about it a little bit. So I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer. Uh, back. All right. So here we go. Get you a little bit of a better look at this beauty. So, uh, the Stoker Coach gun is another one of those kind of quintessential American classics. Uh, I've got my Remington 870 in the back. That's probably the most iconic, uh, one of the most iconic um, American shotguns. So, 
wanted something else. I wanted something a little bit different. I always loved the coach guns, I loved the cowboy stuff, so this was no brainer. Uh, I actually looked at this, I'd never seen the Supreme model until a couple years ago. Uh, I was actually at Bro, uh, Bass Pro Shop, saw them, and I kind of fell in love with it. The difference in the Supreme model over a standard coach gun is they just put a little bit more love in it. Uh, it's got the higher grade walnut, high gloss finish, it's got the nickel finish. Uh, it's kind of, I was doing some reading back in the day, and it said something about uh, the standard Stoker Coach gun is the ideal beat around cowboy action shooter. The Coach Gun Supreme is what a rich cowboy would carry. So I was like, alright, well, I want to be the rich cowboy. Because I've got enough stuff that I beat on. I want something that's pretty. And with that being said, this is still going to get used. Right, this is still a field gun to me. This isn't something I'm going to go uh, stick up on the wall and, and never touch. Um, but it's still going to be a field gun. I'm just not going to beat on it quite as hard as. Uh, my AKs or my 870 mic. So I'm going to go over uh, some topics. And uh, first of all, it's just, it's a classic. I just love that classic coach gun look. And it's just, we are clear. I'm not handling any live ammo. So it's just that uh, the standard double barrels saying uh, give them both barrels is something that everybody knows, you know, because it's just something about two barrels of 12 gauge. Uh, so it's just, I, I just love this, this classic, iconic stuff. You know, this was uh, kind of the first uh, defensive shotgun, really. Uh, you know, it was all, that's why it's called a coach gun. Wells Fargo actually started having to produce for the Wells Fargo stagecoaches to uh, keep any undesirables from, uh, having their way because that right there that's a deterrent so and it's just everybody loves a double barrel if you don't love a double barrel something's wrong with you you're not in America um, it's like I said something I always wanted and I finally got um so uh, this is the double trigger model uh, they come with double and single triggers and I'll talk a little bit later about why I chose um, the double trigger model. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's got the nickel finish, so it uh, should be a little bit more weather resistant, and it's just pretty. Like I said, it's like triple A grade walnut. It's, this is really, really nice wood. Um, it's nice and heavily checkered. It uh, feels good in the hand. You can, you can get grip on it. It's nice. I like that. It's not like some of the stuff you see, like um, my 70s it's a newer model. I think I bought it and must have bought it in probably 2013, 2014, something like that. So it's uh, not really checkered. It's just kind of needle pressed in to make little indentions. Uh, something I'm not real fond of. I need to get some old, some old police trading wood or something to put on it. So that's it. <clears throat> it's got a nice thick uh, rubber butt pad, and that is nice because. Uh, these things kick like a mule. You know, you got a little bit shorter barrel, and this thing only weighs like six and a half pounds. Uh, so full power uh, buckshot. It's got a wallop through this stuff, and that uh, that recoil pad really helps. Um, I've got a Marlin Goose gun. If you don't know what that is, uh, I might do a little video on it one day. That's a bolt action, uh, long barrel, and it's got little to no. It has a rubber butt pad, but it's so old, it's one my grandfather gave me. It's so old, it's just dry rotting and hard. Uh, you run magnums so to that crap, or just regular buckshot, it, it packs a wallet. But this, it's a, it lets you know it's there. But like I said, uh, they just paid a little bit more attention to the fit and finish. Uh, you know, it's the nickel plating, it's a lot prettier wood, it's very pretty. Uh, the standard coach gun's just kind of a, more of a rough, a work gun kind of thing and like I said this is still going to be a work gun but this was just made to be the pretty gun and I think they did a very good job it's a two and three quarter in a three inch chamber uh, so that's no problem I don't never shoot anything more than three I've never had a reason for uh, three and a half or whatever they are I've never done a lot of uh, heavy bird hunting uh, ducks or anything like that uh, turkeys 
and honestly if I'm gonna hunt turkeys or anything like that I think I can make do with three inch shells. So, so one thing is when you break it, put your tank release force, brace your barrels. It's an automatic safety. It's one thing that kind of messed us up because the day after I got it, we had a skeet shoot for the 4th of July. And I actually had some footage of that, but it was not very good because uh, nobody uh, would respect the camera. <laughs> so everybody stood in front of it, or there was too much, uh, too many kids running around it and stuff like that because uh, we were trying to teach some kids some gun safety and kids were watching and shoot skeets and everything, you know, and uh, the audio was absurd. Uh, so I just I just cut all that out. Uh, but I'll show you this. It has the tank safety. Press forward for fire. Let's see if you can see this. The lever drops. It automatically engages your safety. It's not a bad thing. You know, I like safety. Uh, it's just one of those things you gotta get used to. Any of the double barrels I ever shot, they were automatic, and you had to physically put it back on safe. Um, it's just like with my Marlin Dart. Um, all the Marlins I ever dealt with were older, and then I got this Dart. You know, and it's it's a new gun. It's got the little cross bolt safety thing. Every time I shoot that gun, every time I get out shooting, the first thing I do is rock that hammer back, click. I'm not used to that cross bolt. Um, range point precision makes a safety delete for it, but I was going to do that, then I said, you know what? You can't be too careful, so I think I'm just going to leave it. And I know some people will take these when they tune them up for cowboy action shooting, they'll actually disable that safety. Um, it's something I'm not going to do. It's there for a reason. And uh, like I said, I've got kids now and everything else, so the safer stuff can be, the better. So we're going to leave that. Um, as is, it's just something I have to learn to flip that safety back. Of course, you know, I had I ran a Mossberg 500 for a long time, and it's a tank safety, so I'm pretty used to that, and I usually uh, always run my safeties. But it's just a little bit of a pain in the butt when you're skeet shooting or hunting birds and you're running fast. You drop your barrels, pull the old shells out, put your new shells in, go up and go, click, dang it, miss a shot. Oh, well. It's just uh, something i got to train more on is remembering to run the safety on a double barrel. It's something I'm not used to. So uh, that's that. Uh, it does have screw-in chokes. I don't know if you can see what those are. Screw-in chokes. A buddy of mine, he was kind of wanting to get a coach gun after he saw mine. He's like, I don't have screw-in chokes, does it? Yeah, it does. Told him a couple times, but he uh, kept forgetting. Uh, so he's my buddy that I do a lot of hunting with over in South <coughs> Southern Nation Outdoors. So he actually went, couldn't get a coach gun that he, that he wanted, so he actually picked up a Stover Condor. And, uh, but he didn't think the mine had screen chokes. I said, no, it does. Now, I don't know about the standard model, but I know the Supreme model does have threaded chokes. And it comes with the proof cylinder and the modified. I love improved cylinder. And if I remember correctly, improved cylinder is the right barrel, and that's the first trigger. I can't remember. i got to take it out and look which one is. And I honestly was just too excited to get out playing with it. I didn't pay attention to what barrel was what trigger. So I've just got to get out and do some playing around with it. Get that memory on which barrel is what trigger and which choke is in what barrel. <laughs> uh, so it's, like I said, it's, it's nice to be able to have that ability to change up chokes because this is going to be kind of my do-it-all shotgun. My 870. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. When I got it, it was just the old Walmart special uh, standard Remington 870. It's no Ultra Mag. It's no Express. It's nothing like that. Uh, it's just had the 28 inch barrel, uh, vent ribbed, all that good stuff. I think. And at the time, I was working in a machine shop. And the senior machinist there, me and him became real good friends because he was a gun guy. Old school dude. So he did lots of gunsmithing himself. Well, he picked up uh, some barrel threading kits for threading chokes. So uh, me and him went over. He did a Ithaca 37, and I did my uh, Remington. So I cut the barrel down, 
to, uh, to 20 inches. Uh, no, 18 inches. 18, uh, I think I did 18 and three quarter. I'm like, I was going to do 18 and a half. But I ended up going up, I think, because I wanted to cut on one of the vent ribs. I didn't have this weird notch missing. And there was a shop right up in front of us. That was Colonial Arms that made choke tubes in-house. So we just, on our lunch break, walked up one day and picked up a couple choke tubes. And I went with the extended, full ported. Um, and the reason being is I wanted as tight a pattern as I could get because this was, at the time, this was going to be my primary for home defense. And it, it still is. When there's a bump in the night, generally, this is what I grab because there's people on both sides of us uh, not too far away. And you never know what's going to happen. And I don't really want to let loose with uh, 30 caliber rifle rounds uh, going through the walls and hitting the neighbors. So I grabbed this most of the time. So like I said, it's got, it's custom threaded. And I've got that extended ported uh, full choke. So I put the little uh, fire rocket bead on it. So that's that. But I don't have any chokes for it other than that one. And uh, it's garbage for bird hunting. Uh, the other week I went out bird hunting, went on crow hunt, and I couldn't hit a damn thing. Well, this, uh, uh, I've, I've taken it out after birds, and it does very good, and it does very good uh, for skeet shooting. Both barrels, so both the improved cylinder and the modified are both very good for it. And like I said, I'll stock up. I'll probably get a couple improved modifieds and a couple fulls so I can change that. I have both barrels choked the same. Uh, for deer and stuff like that if I ever need to have a follow-up shot and I need the same thread, uh, spread my thread. So that's that. So I really like having that ability. Um, like I said, I've already talked about the safety. Uh, a lot of people has it's just brass bead, brass bead front sight. And something that I really like about it is pretty much all these old double barrels or the new ones as well is just the quick takedown. So if you want to take this thing and pack it away nice and neat for traveling, that's all there is to it. Pull a latch under the handguard, pop it off, break your barrel open, and it just pops apart. So I uh, really want to get me one of those um, guitar case, gun case things. I'm going to probably get an insert just for coach gun. Because why not? There we go. Uh, the front trigger is a little bit lighter than the rear trigger. I don't know if that's just something that'll break in, but I have noticed that the front trigger it does have slightly lighter pull than the rear trigger. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully tomorrow, I actually went and picked up a skeet thrower uh, the other day so that I can shoot skeets by myself. So I have to have somebody out there throwing them with a little hand lever skeet thrower. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a little bit of action uh, shooting skeets with it and I'll do up some some patterning videos because I've got to get out throw up some paper and see what kind of patterns I'm getting out of different ammunitions with it and uh, just get used to running the break action double barrel so that's something that I'm definitely going to put forward and I'll let everybody see it it'll be fun and that's really all I've got to say about it again it's another one of those very simple it's it's a double barrel shotgun I mean it's hard to make a really long video about it because that's it's about all the data you need like I said it was about I think when I got it, it was about five hundred nineteen dollars what they told me it was after taxes I think I got out for five fifty I think it was yeah it was about five fifty because uh, my daughter conned me into buying her a fifteen dollar stuffed fish from Bass Pro Shop so I got out for about five hundred seventy five dollars so uh, so that was nice. And let's see, I've gone over the safeties, finish, chokes. So I think that's about all I've got, guys. But I just kind of want to show it off because I'm really proud of it. Something I've wanted for a long time, and I finally got one. And just what's sexier than a nickel plated uh, AAA walnut double barrel shotgun? So uh, I'm going to cut it off right there. And all right. So, we talked about the Stoker Coach Gun Supreme a little bit, so now we're just going to go out in the field 
have a little fun on the range. I uh, got some paper up on a, on a stand. I actually went down to the swamp last night and did a little shooting. Uh, camera footage didn't look real great. It was foggy, it was really humid. It was really hot yesterday and wet, so uh, it's not very clear. And I was burning it up, didn't like it. I might put some of it in there, just use these patterns with buckshot. Uh, but today is mostly just going to be bird shot because that's what I've got an abundance of right now. And the buckshot I've got on hand is something I just try to keep on hand. I don't want to really use it up right now. i got to buy some more. So I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, we'll go out on the range. Alright, we're just going to play with a little assortment of Federal Low Brass uh, 7 and a half and Winchester 7 and a half. Some of it's high brass, some of it's low brass. just kind of a mixture of what I had thrown in a little baggie in the box. So just going to put it out. Let's see it going. And uh, I'll move the camera over show the target some and uh, it'll be good fun. <laughs> 